Today, we're talking about TOGAF, the framework that makes building and managing enterprise systems as smooth as possible. If that sounds fancy, don't worry. I'll make it simple. Let's say you're planning to build a dream house, not just any house, but one with a smart home system, a pool, and maybe even a robot butler. Now imagine diving into that project with no plan, no blueprints, no budget, no idea what you're building or how it'll all fit together. It's chaos, right? That's where TOGAF's Architecture Development Method, or ADM, comes in. It's like the blueprint for building not just houses, but organizations and their systems, step by step. So, let's walk through the ADM process together. There are nine phases, all connected around a central theme, requirements management, which is like the master to-do list that keeps everything on track. We start with preliminary phase. This is like laying the groundwork for your dream house. You figure out the basics. What's the purpose of the project? Who's involved? And what tools you'll use? In the enterprise world, this is where you define architecture principles, governance frameworks, and the team structure. Think of it as deciding whether you're building with Legos or bricks and who's on your construction crew. Next, we have architecture vision, phase A. This is your big picture idea, your vision board. For your house, it's sketching out that pool, the robot butler, and maybe a rooftop garden. For businesses, this is where you define what success looks like. It's the high-level plan that answers, what are we building and why? You create a vision document, get buy-in from stakeholders, and make sure everyone's on the same page. Moving on to business architecture, phase B. Here's where you ask, what does the business need to achieve this vision? For your house, this is like listing the rooms and their purposes, kitchen for cooking, living room for chilling, and so on. In a company, it's about understanding workflows, processes, and business goals. You map out what needs to happen from the business side to support the vision. Then we dive into information systems architectures, phase C. Think of this as designing the brain and nervous system of your house, how all the smart devices, security systems, and internet connections work together. For businesses, it's about defining the data architecture, where information is stored and how it flows, an application architecture, what software and systems you'll use. Next is technology architecture, phase D. This is the hardware phase, the nuts and bolts. For your house, it's choosing materials like steel beams for structure, wiring for electricity, and tiles for the pool. For an organization, it's about deciding the infrastructure, servers, networks, and tools like cloud services. It's where IT comes into play to support the business needs and information systems. Now comes opportunities and solutions, phase E. Imagine you've got your house plans ready, but now you're comparing options. Do you go for solar panels or a traditional power grid? For businesses, this is where you identify gaps between the current state and the vision and explore potential solutions to fill those gaps. You also figure out what's realistic based on your budget and time constraints. Phase F is migration planning. This is where you create a timeline and budget for turning the dream into reality. For your house, it's deciding when to start construction, which contractors to hire first, and how to sequence the work. For businesses, it's planning how to roll out new systems or processes without disrupting everything. You map out the steps and prioritize what gets implemented first. Next, we have implementation governance, phase G. This is like checking on the construction crew to make sure the pool isn't being built where the living room should be. It's all about overseeing the implementation to ensure everything aligns with the original vision. In a company, it's about managing the execution of the architecture while sticking to the plan and making adjustments if needed. Finally, we get to architecture change management, phase H. This is where you ensure the house, or in this case, the enterprise, can evolve. Maybe you decide you need a second pool later, or the robot butler needs an upgrade. Businesses are dynamic, and this phase is about adapting the architecture to future needs, handling upgrades, and keeping things relevant. And tying it all together is requirements management, sitting in the center of it all. Think of this as the master checklist that tracks what you need, what's changing, and how it impacts everything else. It ensures all phases are aligned and nothing falls through the cracks. So, there you have it. 
the TOGAF ADM explained using a house building analogy. Whether you're designing a dream home or building the IT backbone of a business, the ADM ensures you're working methodically, staying organized, and always adapting to change. If you enjoyed this explanation, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Tech Explained, and let me know in the comments, how would you use TOGAF in your own projects? Let's chat about it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.